Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and a city in. We put together this presentation on baselining and I'm using an example of copying a file because this has got to be the most common thing people do and I can't tell you how many times I see people doing this for the wrong reasons or the wrong methodology and they end up with the wrong conclusions and go down the rabbit hole. So let's see if this helps you out. I'm going to jump right into it. So copying a file. It's the most common level of performance testing. Uh, there's many factors that affect performance. Now Copying a file is just one example of what you could do. You'll see that a little, little later on in the presentation, but I can't tell you how many times people just copy a file, but I, I need to make sure you understand why, how, and all that good stuff uh, so you do it correctly and you don't go down the wrong path. So having a solid methodology will help you explain performance anomalies, and that's the key here, right? The Copying a file, testing your network, testing performance is just helping you explain something. You're not trying to fix anything. You're trying to explain, document, illustrate, what is going on. Now just thinking about that alone that's going to help you move on right off the bat. The big tip is to try to capture as much detail as possible and what I mean by that is is everything so VLAN information if you know what model of switch you know what model of computer the operating system anything if you're using web servers is it Apache is it IIS is it some other type of proprietary one protocols being anything you can think of just jot it down, port numbers, anything. And, and there's no right or wrong list. It's just whatever you can get your hands on at that time. So you can compare it in the future if something should change, like if a drive changes or the version of operating system, the version of software. All that stuff may explain the differences you'll get in the future with your current results. One huge factor to consider is if your applications behave like a file transfer, <laughs> or constant but less bandwidth and, and this is a big point and and again I'll mention this again later but I, I can't tell you how many times people do a transfer they they get let's just say it's a hundred meg link and they get 95 meg out of a hundred therefore my application should run fine and my question is well does your application transfer a lot of data I don't know is did you do a download or an upload with your test uh, I think I downloaded well does your application download a lot I don't know so you see where I'm going with this? You need to make sure that your file test, your copy, is as close to what you're trying to mimic as possible. And what that might mean is that you have to do a baseline of the application. So in those types of scenarios, I just say proceed with caution. So the basic methodology is pretty simple. So we're going to figure out the test methodology. We're going to determine a file size because we're copying a file in this example. We're going to document the endpoints and we're going to document the network path. At the end of that, we'll have some sort of results that we can look at. So the test methodology. So for this example, I'm going to create a simple Windows batch file. And it's going to start a timer. It's going to copy the files. It's going to stop the timer and record the results in a text file. Now what I'm going to use is whatever native commands I have in Microsoft because a lot of my clients will say I can't install anything on my machine. We have software to block any type of software you try to install. We can't run things off a portable USB flash drive all that sort of thing. So batch files you can create in any Windows operating system and the commands I'm going to show you are in any Microsoft operating system. So in this case, the drive that I'm mapping in advance is P, for example, and that's an example of what you might want to document as you go through it. The drive was previously mapped, and if it wasn't, then your batch file might have a net use P colon server resource, that sort of thing. The batch file allows flexibility in being able to run the test in scheduler, a desktop shortcut, or maintain test parameter consistencies. And that's pretty obvious. So if you do have a batch file, anybody can run it anytime and you'll always get the same methodology. Not the same results, the same methodology. And by doing that, if you do want to put it in the Windows task scheduler, which is built into Windows, you can have it run this test, this copy, this download, this upload, whatever it happens to be. And you can have it go anytime you want. So 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 2 p.m., whatever time you want. And that way you don't have to sit there and baby it. The other benefit is that uh, even those systems that are locked down and you can't install third-party software as I mentioned before can run all these commands so again the Windows task scheduler is something you might want to look at if you're not familiar with it and Microsoft batch files have been around since oh DOS what two three way back when in the day so this should not be an issue for most people with Microsoft operating systems and if you did want to do this same thing but with Linux then you're going to be talking about bash scripts and by doing that then you just simply learn a little bit about bash so determine the file size do not randomly pick a file size and that's what I see people do all the time oh I got a 10 gig file I got a 1 gig file let's just do that wrong don't do that if you use a methodology and some basic math you can get more out of your test 
And the basic issue we run into is that network speed is in bits, or capacity is in bits. File sizes are measured in bytes. A bit is not a byte, and a byte is not a bit. And that's where people start to run into problems. And, I, and I've actually heard people say the following sentence. I've got a 100 meg file. It's 100 meg per second. So I have a 100 meg file, so that should take one second. And just mathematically, that's wrong, right? And a whole bunch of other stuff, too. But that's not the right way to do it. It's megabits, say the whole word, or megabytes. And that helps you moving forward. So bits divided by 8 gives you bytes. And that's a simple math, right? If you did have a 100 megabit per second link, that translates mathematically to 12.5 megabytes per second. That's also helpful because some tools only report bytes, not bits. So this also helps you read those tools a little bit better. When you do talk about these speed calculations, you always pick the slowest link between the two endpoints, right? You might have a machine at 10 gig, another machine at 1 gig, but the link between them might be 100 meg or 10 meg or whatever it happens to be. So always use the lowest link. Now, if you have a wireless link in between them, I always just divide by two, just because of load and the way wireless works. It just gives you, you know, a better reference. I'm not saying they all work like that, but these are just rules of thumb. We determine the test duration in this case I'm using 10 seconds uh, it doesn't have to be I just like using 10 so that means if I have 12.5 megabytes per second and I want 10 second tests well that's 125 megabytes done it's that simple so now I need 125 megabyte file it doesn't need to be exact just you know around that size now I have a time reference that's the bonus so I know when I do my test it should be about 10 seconds now if it's 11 if it's 12 am I gonna freak out no but if it's 10 minutes then it's like what is going on that type of thing this is an example of network documentation it doesn't have to be 30 pages it's not be anything magical it's just whatever you know about the box like this one all I know is the IP it's Windows 2012 server and 16 gigs of RAM. It's all I know period end of story so well, that's all I'm gonna put in there right if you do get more information later great put it in but for now just put something in there so you can identify it later on I've got the machine here, Windows 10, 8 gigs of RAM, and I also put a little bit of information about the hard drive because we're copying files. I don't know that about the server, so I can't put it in there, and that's fine. Just whatever you got, you put in there. And in the middle, I don't know what's going on. There's just routers, switches, etc. Now, what you could do is a trace route, you know, fill in the blanks, that sort of thing. But for now, this is this is good enough. So in my batch file, explain. Now, I'm going to make this really quick and easy, and you can look at this later in your spare time. Uh, Echo, if you've never done this before, basically sends this text to the screen. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I've done this greater than sign, which puts that text into this file. The only thing you really need to know is a single greater than sign creates the file. A double greater than sign appends to the file. Right? If it doesn't exist, it creates the file as well. So what am I doing? I'm putting a little title in there saying copy 118 megabyte results. And I put start time. And then I have this time in here, right? So percent, time, percent. That's going to give me the current time. Right? And that's built into Windows. This is not a software thing to download. It's not a utility or whatever. Then we just copy. Uh, the dash Y is just basically going to go write the file if it exists, but it shouldn't be there anyways. I just put it in there just in case. And then I do a little echo saying the stop time is whatever. And all this gets written into this file called test underscore results dot text. And you can call that anything you like. What are we going to do next? A timeout for five seconds. Just so I can see what's going on in case something bad happens, files not found, error, whatever, I can stop the test. And then I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to delete that file. Another five second delay to make sure I can see what's going on. These delays don't need to be there, but I just put them in there anyways. And then what we're going to do is X copy. So I've done a copy and I've done an X copy. And that's an example of two things with the same client on the same network with the same server. And you want to see if there's any difference, right? There may not be, but that's an example that I can think of. So batch file results. So what does it look like? This is exactly what's in that file that got created, that text file. So it says copy and then it says start the time stop the time these are minutes right so 1 10 p.m. 1 14 p.m. that sort of thing so approximately three minutes and then the X copy was also approximately three minutes for a hundred meg file and the answer was yikes because we weren't expecting that right we expected to go a lot quicker than that and with this particular example the client was baselining what they had because they wanted to move to a new circuit because it was supposed to be better and we've all heard that before and I said well let's just do this It's not gonna take long find out what it looks like I said to them before we move to that new circuit, let's also do a couple of pings. And the thing about pings I like to tell people is ping with this dash L. I don't know how good your screen is right now, but there's a dash L. One, two, three, four is 1,234 bytes of payload. And dash N is number of pings, in this case 60. So I'm going to send 60 pings with some data in it. And I always say that the analogy is I'm putting pressure in the pipes, right? So I send 60. 
I want to see what's going on. I got 8% loss. If I did ping with the default size, which is 32 bytes, that's the default for Microsoft. Look, no loss. So I, this is really important. I explain to people a lot of times when you ping things, you just load it up a bit, right? And if you know your application is 600 bytes of payload, put 600. I just put 1, 2, 3, 4 because it kind of looks cool. And why not? 1,234 bytes. If you put a lot of data in there, like more than you can actually accept in the frame, uh, like you put 2,000, well, then ping will just segment those packets. And we don't want to test that. So keep it under, um, I'm going to say, generically speaking, keep it under 1,300 bytes just to be on the safe side. And you'll be good. So now we move to the new circuit. Same batch file, same file, same server, same everything, just with a new circuit. And look, two seconds and 1.8 seconds. So obviously the new circuit is much better. It doesn't matter what better means right now. The point is we're measuring the impact of moving to a new circuit. This could be moving to a SAN. This could be upgrading your server. This could be moving to Windows 10 or moving to whatever you want to do. Uh, you can actually do a little test before and after and get numbers to illustrate what the effect is. So on the new circuit, we ran our good old ping test, same thing before, and now we have 0% loss. You see that? And obviously, we'll have 0% loss with the standard size as well. So that's it. Hopefully, that helps you out. You can uh, use that batch file as an example to do whatever you like and uh, get out there and do something. Have a good day. Bye for now.